works so, pretty good. I know you're not super into this, but I think you've seen him. Did you hear about Robert Downey Jr.? What did he do? He's coming back to the MCU as Dr. Doom. What? Yeah, I know. That's a lot of people's reactions. I'm like, actually, I think it'd be, it could be cool. I don't understand. Doesn't Iron Man fight Dr. Doom? Well, there's a lot of ways to look at the Cyprian. <laughs> Uh, I mean, no, he's not Iron Man's mortal enemy. He's the Fantastic Four's mortal enemy. But hasn't Iron Man fought Doctor yes, Doom? I feel like he has. Doctor Doom for a while got his face healed and became good, and he took over the role of Iron Man while Iron Man was in a coma. And it's called the Infamous Iron Man, and it's actually a really incredible book series. Like I actually have, which makes it even, which makes it even weirder. So is that to say that his is that the role that he's playing or is he playing the villain role? So I think that that's kind of what's for speculation. Is he playing Tony Stark who ends up becoming Dr. Doom or is Dr. Doc- right. Victor Von Doom just look a lot like Tony Stark? Or does Victor Von Doom, when he gets his face fixed, get his face fixed to look like Tony Stark, Tony Stark. while like Tony that. Stark is in a coma, I like but it's actually movie. Victor Von Doom? And Tony Stark was never dead the entire time, thus negating his sacrifice at the end of Endgame, which would kind of be lame. It would be kind of lame. I wouldn't be. Are they going to do that? Are they going to do that? I don't think. Are they going to do that? No, man. I don't know. They have to do. Was Tony Stark (laughs) Victor Von Doom the whole time? Come on, man. Come on. All right, so hello and welcome to Royal Path. I'm your host, Andrew. And this may not be a good question. I mean, it'll be a good question, but I'm not sure. Well, whatever. What is your guys's? I'm here to ask Cyprian and Father Turbo. What is your guys's favorite um, pre-communion prayer of the like 10 in the Jordanville? Because I know you don't really say them a lot, Father. And then I have a backup question if we don't think that this one's going to work. I mean, this one's oh. not good for me because I don't get to commune all that often. <laughs> sure. Oh, yeah. I didn't think of my fault. Okay. Yeah, we can do another question. Here, let me do another question. Um, what is your guys's? I'm sorry. I've been on this. And so maybe some of the people who know me in the real meat space will know, will be like, oh, this guy. But what's your favorite um, live performance of a song or artist or whatever, like like favorite show or favorite song or whatever, particularly something that sticks out. I have my answer if you guys need a minute. Favorite live performance? That yes. that that we've seen or that like no, 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 uh, no, 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 that no. we've just, encountered like just encountered whatever in whatever medium. Oh man. Oh man. All right, so I'll go. So the reason I bring go this ahead. up is um there's that Spanish drummer dude uh, he's really big. I can't, I can never remember what his name is, but he does a lot of drum videos. Um, mm-hmm. he's like kind of the king of the internet for drums right now. And he covered, um, Rosanna by Toto. And then there's okay. this live performance by them from like 1991, whether I think they're at like some kind of jazz festival. And it is the most absolutely incredible live show I've ever seen. Like, um, mm-hmm. at this moment, in my life it is i am all about it because like the whole crowd is completely into it and everybody knows the lyrics um and like the dudes jam at the end like the piano play and the guitarist dudes jam for like another two minutes after the song is ended and everyone is tight like the musicianship is tight and there's like one of the comments on the video i've been watching is like this is what america should have been because it's like so diverse there's like all these different people from different walks of life performing the song it's just uh it's pretty absolutely fantastic and i've been kind of telling a lot of people about it so 
Anyway, that's my question. Song, in, or that's my individu- answer. Sorry. Individual song. Father, Doesn't do you have, have one? Individual. You can just be like this particular. I mean, DG. there's a live album I really like. It's Towards the Within. Uh, it's the mm. live album of Dead Can Dance. It's probably like my favorite live album. Um, so I'll, I'll submit that. Sandra, you're not really into live music, Father, right? Yeah, I don't really like live recording. So when I like, so when there's something good, it's really good. And that that's that's like the one kind of only things that jump out to me. I mean, there's a couple, there's a couple key moments. Probably one of the greatest live performances ever captured, though, was Jimi Hendrix, um, mm. Machine Gun. Mm. Sure. Uh, you know, there's that. Mm. Um, that is just. I think I mentioned this before, but if anyone ever thinks Jimi Hendrix is, is overrated, I just sit them down and make sure that there's trash receptacles and that there's you know things around them with they <laughs> lose continents. And um, <laughs> I put that on for them. And there's a moment there. I, I used to know the minute, but there's a moment there. He goes through the first verse. He goes into the solo and like, man, two bars into the solo, he hits this one note and he sustains it. And it's like he unlocks the gate of hell. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. just, it, <laughs> sure. It's, it's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Uh, hmm. got an answer? I, I'm, I mean, I, I don't know if I could go. I don't know if I could go one song, but if I had to pick, like, and this is not. I've seen a lot of live performances, and I've seen some wild ones. Like probably the 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 one where I was the most like. I don't know if I'll ever see anything like this again. It's probably Rabbit in the Moon, but that's just like it's performance, crazy performance stuff. But um, in terms of like re- live recordings, video recordings, I'll say almost universally that i will like stop everything that i'm doing if if i chance upon a live recording of fela kuti performing with this whole band oh yeah and everything like that always is like it will stop me in my tracks because there's just something i mean it's probably literally magical because i think he was doing some sort of like sort of sure. and stuff like that was his whole sure. thing but it's like there's something particular particular about Fela performing that is like it's there's just something completely different and it'll stop me in my tracks every single time yeah. every time that's yeah tight. that's cool mm-hmm. all right well that's that so um well and then okay here's this I wanted to actually say something before we got started tonight that I don't often uh well I do probably more than I think I do. I checked the comments uh, on our mm. and from our last video we had posted. There are a couple people who talked about some of the cryptic references that we were making to the purge, quote unquote. Were they cryptic though? Well, were they I'm going to say this. This is just allow me. I think actually there's some merit to that criticism on my part, and so I kind of want to say. I try to stay away from doom casting. Like, I don't really know what's going to happen. And I've been wrong a lot. I've made a lot of like, like, check this out. And then I like do the equivalent of like trying to make like a sweet shot in pool, but like end up like tearing the felt and knocking the like ball out and into someone's <laughs> like girlfriend's beer or something like that. Yeah. So I'm just saying I try and avoid it. And so all I was trying to say is typically the way that this has historically gone down is once the dictator rises to power, there is a purge. They yeah. usually, they, they purge. It's happened, you know. Forgive seven. me. Forgive me. Drain the swamp. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is, he's literally I mean, describing like, a purge. A yeah. literal purge. He's describing a literal purge. Drain the I'm swamp. Not, what, what is that? I'm not, I'm not saying he's not going to. But I, I'd rather it maybe remain unspoken a little bit because I'm not trying to be like the check this out. And then, you know, I was literally that's what I was referring to was that pattern and the fact that he's alluded to that that's what he is trying to do. So but um, I, th- I think there's a, there's something weird here for anybody who thinks that this idea of a purge of of those in power performing a purge, I'm like. Did you just have amnesia about the last 
10 years? Ten like, years. what do you think? What? Yeah. What do you think canceling canceling people is? What do you think? think you know I what I mean? Honestly, what, it's it's like, weird like, honestly, that people would think that this is something. Oh, cryptic, a purge. That's cryptic. It's like, no, you're in it, dude. Like, what are you talking about? I think it was just my phrasing. I think is what they're talking. Yeah, because because everyone associates it with the the movie. Right, 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 right. So that I mean, I, but, I think that's yeah. I think that's the thing. Those people were like, they're thinking of the movie. And they're thinking yeah. about everything being over the top, like the movie, you know, and yeah. it's, it's, it's just like we were talking about before, you know, we're addressing all those people. If they're, if they're still around, they may be like, I've had it with these guys, but <laughs> you know, the, the thing is, is if you're still around, um, part of the problem is that, you know, for better, or for worse, even this type of conversation we're having right now, is just part of what we do is that we just, we were just kind of honest about things, including the fact that we, this is an ongoing conversation. These aren't curated conversations with points to kind of like get something across. And I think for some people, like for that episode, they kind of come in, whatever algorithm does, but you got to take in mind for, for like people who make those comments, those are people generally who are not really kind of following what we're doing because this is, this is part of a longer conversation. So for instance, we, we would talk about back in 20, Matt, if everything had gone Mad Max, it would have been so much better because the people who we knew and loved, who bounced, who lost their mind, they were like, see, see? And, and because nothing was like Mad Max, it wasn't over the top, they thought, okay, you can trust the government. Okay, you can, you know, but that's not how it works. And I think that's also part of what we're trying to say is none of this works with the grandiose, dramatic flair of cinema. Like mm-hmm. that's the, the, you know what I, I mean. So, so there's or, or some sort of or some sort of materialistic things. worldly. Forgive me, Father. Some sort of yeah. materialistic worldly precision, which is what it seems that they're like demanding. Oh, give me the exact day, the exact. Like I had a buddy who d- went on the whole thing was going down. I, I had told him beforehand. I was like, look, man, they're going to require you to get the to get the poke to get a driver's license. And then all these things happened. They were, they were requiring it for you to sit outside at a cafe in France. All these, they were requiring it for you to be in the military, for you to go to work, for you to fly on an airplane. And he was like, but dude, they didn't require it for driver's licenses. And I was like, bro, <laughs> yeah, like, wait, no. But before yeah. any of this, I told you that, 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 that it was going to be restricting normal everyday life, but because it wasn't the exact precise right. driver's license that so, I said, now you're you like, sure? no, you and, I, and I think, well, just hold on. Say- Be okay. sure and check us out on the other formats because we just got pulled off YouTube because of Cyprian's <laughs> comment. But that's okay. I mean, that's yeah, right. yeah, yeah. But anyway, Father, what were you saying? But but I mean, I was gonna say I think that's the thing too about um, like there's ov- there's an ongoing reference to the demonic Ephesians six twelve right, which is mm-hmm. interesting that that got picked up by like Megan Kelly or Machine Gun mm-hmm. Kelly or whatever that one lady you know, um, mm-hmm. but. You know, when we're talking about the demonic, just for those people who are just now tuning in and whatever, just so we're clear, it's not the Exorcist movie. It's not head spinning around yes. and split. And and really, and, and, and for some, and I think that's part of our thing, too, is trying to get people to understand. It's like the public service that we're trying to do is to try to under, get people to understand how this plays out in the real world, how orthodoxy plays out in the real world, not in, not in the theory of the academy and not in the LARPing zone of, you know, where a lot of people are at. How does this really play out? How does salvation, trying to find Christ, trying to be in the church, trying to navigate uh, a spiritual life in this world, how does that really play out? So part of that is also, like, how does the demonic really play out? And the demons work primarily in the realm of thought. So when we're talking about the demonic, we're not talking about the demonic like all the other stuff. Because it's not about demon bashing and this and that. It's like that's part of the trap. <laughs> it's thinking that you know you're some sort of paladin who's going to you know be fighting the guys in the in with bat wings in the sky. That's not it's nothing at all what we're talking about. Um, so, so I think that's this, where that but, comes from. This uh, I think leads me to because of course we have to talk about the the ritual that took place in Paris. Right. I mean, we would be remiss if if we didn't. But what I find so interesting about it is so there's a couple things. And these are these are the things that I wanted to bring up, like because I also had an interesting experience related to my previous life 
where something popped back up in the same week and it was showing me the same pattern of like the like um the fact that everything was so in your face the fact that they did like oh we're absolutely doing the last supper here and we're admitting that we're doing it as a mockery oh here's the golden calf guys like a giant golden calf we're going to do it, it right here has it and, always been what, this pagan like has no, it long- well it, well that's kind of what i wanted to bring up and like well, what i wanted to bring spin, up though? was what's that well that's the new spin that's 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 the backtrack. Oh, you stupid Americans, you stupid right, Christians. Right. This is right. actually Tabacchus and, and Dionysius. And actually, that's not the pale horse. It's 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 just like come on, man. You know? Well, but I think I think when it's that, it was interesting because it was really the reaction. Like when you were talking about what is the demonic, and I was like, Man, it's really interesting. They put it out there in such an obvious way. And that's the thing. Like, we're sitting here talking about it like, oh, man, they just went, this is absurd what they're doing. But people really, really are getting, like, really upset about it. It's really a thing. And I'm like, yo, your upsetness is why they did it. Right. They did it to get you upset. That's what's really going on. Right. But see, people... Go ahead. And and that's that's the thing is that that's why, I mean... It doesn't really matter how kind of redundant it feels. It obviously needs to keep being said because I was thinking about this is the first thing. It's like, a you know, I remember my dad telling me when you're out there, you know, you're going to encounter people, you're going to encounter police officers. They're going to try to provoke you. That's that's the job. Right. That's real. And, you know, speaking, you know, whatever, speaking about the demonic. But that's a thing, right? Part of the part of the temptation and the work of the demonic is to provoke people, to provoke people into action, behavior, impulse, right? Whether it's outrage, shock, seduction, like it's to provoke and elicit some sort of response, right? That's that is the goal. But the problem I think people have with that is, is like it makes them feel as if. They're powerless. I think that, you know, so are you supposed to just observe these things and let them mock God and this and that? And and I don't think I don't think that's the case at all. You know, but I think what is the case sometimes, like in like in this situation, is to actually um be still. Because being still is a choice for God. Mm-hmm. Being still is an action of like faith, right? And being still is by no means um being cowardly, we're coming up on the feast of the prophet Elijah uh, on the uh, the church calendar, and um, prophet Elijah is a great example of this. Prophet Elijah chose to be still, you know, while the um, not even just on the back end, right, but on the front end when he was battling the the priests of Baal. If you remember, you know, they're in a frenzy, they're whipping themselves up, and you know, he gave a couple jabs here and there. He's like, hey. You know, maybe try a little harder. Maybe your God's in the bathroom. You know, he gave these <laughs> jabs, but ultimately he he was still and he waited for them to expend themselves, right? Just like a good fighter would sometimes, you know? If you can't get out there on the first run and just knock the person out, then you let them, you know, expend their energy and run the clock down. So I think that's, if someone was kind of like, well, what what's your, what are you guys trying to get at? I, I would say, yeah, the kind of Elijah um, you know, uh, play Elijah play, if you would, just waiting, you know, letting the the prophets of Baal have their have their their time and being being still and know that I am God and waiting for the time in which the Lord now moves you to act, right? And I think that's really imperative because if what we're saying is the case, which we believe it is, that provocation is the play, is their play, yeah. Right. I, if I can just say, I'm I'm sorry, Cyprian, because I think you got something to say too. But Saint Paisius right. talked about this um, time when he was fighting in the Greek in the Civil War, and he was the radio guy. And so one of the, they were getting fired on his you know his group of soldiers that he was in, and he and they wanted to give him a gun and fire back. He's like, this is not what we need. We need someone to run away a few distance and 
to take the time to establish the antenna so I can call in reinforcements. Mm -hmm. We don't need one more person firing guns. We need reinforcements. So he ran away and established the radio and then called in reinforcements. And I think that we don't need more people with guns right now. We need more people yeah. like being still and calling in like the angelic reinforcements of being like, yeah, I mean, and, and if I, if I may, maybe we could go there a little bit because let's just, I don't know how long we want to spend on it, but just kind of observing how this melee has gone down. Right. So there's the initial shock and awe and everyone, you know, rightly so whatever is, is kind of upset, but we began to see, um, you know, people coming up and being like, oh, you silly, uneducated evangelicals and Americans and just Christians in general. This is really, you know, whatever historical. Um... In fact, I wish I could pull it up. Maybe I could send it to you. But, you know, you, I'm sure you guys, everyone's already started seeing the um, like the running rebuttals from some of these smarty pants people. Well, the Olympics is a pagan ritual. Yeah. Like there's that that's Period. that's that's not even like we're not even there that you don't there no one can argue that it argue that Period. it's not. So the thing is when you have Christians, you know, kind of going in and, and being like, Oh, you dummies, this is really, you know, stop clutching your pearls, right? This is really about you know, an homage to the Greek gods and this and that, right? And then I would just say in that response, it's like, Yeah, that's fine. But then again, as Christians, you know, or why are we applauding that? See that that's the problem with the academy <laughs> is is the the guy in the academy the quote unquote Christian in the academy right there's this one you know <laughs> I spy the clergyman you know it's like I don't know <laughs> thinking he's fancy whatever but we need to get a posse for that guy anyways um, <laughs> you know the <laughs> the reality is that uh, you know Christians. It's not even about clutching pearls. Christians shouldn't be advocating going back to that darkness. Remember, yes. Christ, that's what Christ came is to deliver from that darkness. Because guess what? It doesn't matter whether it's sophisticated breaches and Chartier boards, right? It's still yes. paganism. Yes. And here's if you want to know how it really works, those gods are still around and, you're, and they're calling those old gods. Dionysius is a real god. Dionysius oh, yeah. is a real spirit. So is Diana, you know, like, and so the frenzy, right, in which they're celebrating mm -hmm. those, mm -hmm. the old gods and their spirit, which people are imbibing, not directly through the taking in of the spirit through wine, but taking in through the eyes, right? They're mm -hmm. imbibing that spirit now, right? And, they're, and so these Christians, you know, they don't even know what they're talking about at this point. And, right? they're, they and are, people are participating. Like that's the, it's the participatory aspect. And I think, so it's like, you know, the prophets keep coming. It's, it's, it's all over. Like we're told in the scripture, like these old gods are trying to get back into the temple nonstop and they mm -hmm. do get back in from time yeah. to time. And that's why the prophets yeah. come. But I find it like, for me, one of the things that was so, so interesting about the reaction was it's like, it seems ironic to me that, a mega church evangelical would be up in arms and upset about someone making a mockery of Christianity because I'm like, wait, but what are you doing every Sunday? Joel Osteen. Oh, he got upset. Oh, I don't know. I, I thought, he I mean, it's, I'm not saying just him, but do you understand oh. where I'm going with this? Because if you look at, at the word mockery, a synonym for that is heresy. Just look it up in a th thesaurus. So, so I'm like, wait a minute. Uh, you're gonna wait. Are, so you, so you don't want to make a mockery of Christianity? What are you doing yeah. then? Are you yeah. orthodox? Yeah. And it's funny that it happened when on the Sunday when we're celebrating the Holy Fathers of the Ecumenical Councils. That is interesting. Sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that, that it's like. And and if you're a demon, it's like, whoa, we won. These people who are making, who are the heretics are getting upset at our heresy. Like we won. We've, yeah. we've pushed them deeper into their thinking they're right in their heresy. And it's like, wow. That's because you know what? That's an entity that's way smarter than you that just did that. Yeah, I think, 
I think the thing is, though, is that these people, um, like, I'm thinking about this one lady that I saw again, you know, it was like Baptist pastor here. And then she kind of goes on her, you know, I'm smarter than you, diatribe. But it's like she's a materialist, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, you're not even really, I mean, I feel comfortable saying she's not even a Christian, you know what I mean? But not, but, but not coming from the perspective of what she's saying. You know, it's just, it's so ironic, some female Baptist pastor, you know, trying to burn the fund, the fundies. You know what I'm saying? It's like, sure. <laughs> I, I don't know. That's meta. That's hyper meta right there. It's yeah. super hyper meta. meta. <laughs> and, and that's the thing. It's almost like you just kind of have to set back a little bit and be like, okay, you know, and, and, and to some degree kind of watch the melee go on because that's, exactly what the enemy is doing is you know mm-hmm. setting it up getting the frenzy and getting getting people to kind of you know expend their energy focused on his rancor and his diversions and all, and all these things and and the whole while they are getting their eyes less and less you know uh, more and more off of Christ right in that sense mm-hmm. because in all of these, like in, in these posts, right? This is the one thing I say, and maybe we move on. But and the few that I've seen from quote unquote Christians, you know, it's like none of them were talking about Christ at all. Right. Even right. even in the sense of like, if they were accusing people of clutching pearls and all that stuff, at least they, you know, they, there's no thing about like you know the Lord would love them. Like I, I don't know. I'm just trying to be in their shoes, but there's nothing like that. It's just all an apology. For you know, Greek mythology and you know all, all the all the sophisto stuff. So, I mean, I don't think that they. I don't think these people, like you say, she's she's a materialist. I mean, I really think that it's like they. I think to them, they think that this was some like historical homage because to them, it's these the the spirit, the spirit realm is not real. Right. Like for them, it's not real. So they're like, oh, why are you so upset about this historical homage when it's like, yo, no, these are like you said, th- these are real gods that are being invoked yeah. in a ritualist con in a ritualistic context being. And it's the powers and the principalities, because at the same time, they're walking around with flags. Mm -hmm. the flag bearers of the principalities Mm -hmm. so you've got the powers and the principalities and it's like who's in control yeah thank you yeah Yeah. (laughs) thank you but but to these but to these people it's not real Mm -hmm. and 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 this is i had the same a same sort of situation happen that like something of a similar pattern where I was reached out to because there's a docu this week, same week, there's a documentary filmmaker who got hired by the network that had my show to do a documentary about this tragedy that I've talked about here. My co-star, you know, in a very, it's something demonic related, you know, murdered this woman and reached out. And it was interesting because even in, and she's very sort of well-known award-winning docu documentarian and called me and said, Oh, can I just talk to you and see your thoughts? And I said to her, uh, my first question to her was like, do you believe in the demonic? And she was just like, no, not really. And and it, it really occurred to me because I don't, I mean, I'm here in a place where people definitely are very spiritual and believe that the spirit world is like around us at all times. That's just a normal part of like the culture here. But I did realize that like, you can't actually get anything right in the current time as a materialist. You just can't get, you just can't get reality it, it can't make sense. Nothing will make sense to you in the current moment. And I don't know if it ever did or if I had just convinced myself that somehow I was making sense of things. Maybe it never did. But I think now they're, now it's just impossible. The stage yeah. that our society is in, it's impossible. There's a, a well, the large... Thing is, you go ahead, Bobby. Well, I was going to say, I mean, to kind of carry that over, one of the things which is a great example of, of how that plays out is um, people can't wrap their mind around people like characters, ones that we know that are on stage and ones that are being revealed. Like people can't wrap their mind around the motivations of, of Elon. They don't know. They don't understand 
people can't wrap their minds around a character like Peter Thiel, right? They don't, if they even know who Peter Thiel is, right? That's, that's an obvious one in the sense of a lot of people don't know. Maybe now in the last couple of weeks because of Vance being elected, people are going to like know. But we've talked about Palantir on here before and people not understanding that. And that's where, again, the, the quote unquote conspiracy thing is to some degree kind of like the smoke screen. It's kind of like, um, you know, the Fed wearing I'm I'm in I'm in the three letter agency shirt. Oh, sure. It's like sure. hiding in plain sight type of thing, but you can't make sense of it. Um, and I've had conversations with people who are they're like, they can't do that. Why would they do that? And it's like they they can't because they're thinking like a plebe, you know, <laughs> they're they're thinking they don't they don't have that mindset of like when you when you have that measure of of influence resources the only thing that moves you is power in the spiritual sense like that's that's the only thing that motivates you you're not you're not motivated altruistically right you're not you're not motivated um for the sake of having even more like like greed in the sense of more material wealth because you've already right the next the next thing and i think this is the thing that people may or may not put into the equation when they're thinking about the salaciousness of, um, you know, the quote unquote occult or Illuminati in like Hollywood and things like that. But putting all the salaciousness aside, just getting into how it works is you get to this place where you, you it, it's not, it's, the money, the fame is not what it, it isn't what people are feeding off of in the sense of the material. Like I get to have any girl I want. I get to have any, what, you know, however many Bugattis, like that's not it anymore. Past, it's, past a certain level. It means nothing. And that level nothing. happens real fast. It, it means nothing. You start, re it really becomes about power. And that's interesting because yep. one of the most powerful prayers that we have in the church, right. From my perspective is the same effort prayer. And the Saint Ephraim prayer is like the shield, the antidote. It's it's the ultimate weapon about those things. You know, oh Lord, master of my life, take from me a spirit of sloth, of despair, and lust of power, and I'll talk. And just this thing about lust of power being square in the in this request of God preserving us from desiring this thing, because it is it it is ultimately the thing that you know, either motivates or is motivated by however you want to pull it apart, rebellion, you know, the, like literally the satanic is is the lust of power, the desire for power. And and it and it drives. I mean, this is the thing. You can it's a it is it's a heck of a battery, man. You can really you can really get to places on it. Um and so this is why people can't wrap their mind around, you know, why certain things, why certain motivations and why certain things are the way they are is because people don't understand that what you would perceive as motivations are so, like they're so off the radar that it's hard for people to wrap their minds around and it just becomes um, easier to say, no, that's, you're just being that's conspiracy or no, that is, you're just being ridiculous. Um, but all it takes is really to, to have some encounters with some people who not even on that level of like a Bezos or like a teal, but even coming, coming down. I mean, it doesn't take, you know, a, I, I forget the statistic. I think the, I think the income was like, once someone reaches, it was something crazy. Like, like, like 10 years ago, I think the number was, I want to say it was like $65,000. That seems low, but this is like 10 years ago. But there was a certain number where there was, there was a study done. They said, once someone gets this level of income, you, you're not really struggling anymore. You can kind of get whatever you want within measure, right? And at, and at that place, when someone's living at that, you know, that strata of class, right, this is where you begin to enter into some of these problems that we're always talking about 
which come from the right. Because the problems from the left, left hand blows, you know, debauchery, the, the things that are basically associated with poor people, right? That that's the thing. The sins oh. that are associated with the poor, oh. with the working class. Are you are you following me? Yeah. That those are the things that are are this is where some of the blind spots for religious people, especially Orthodox, because the Orthodox tend to be statistically a higher median of, of educated per capita. If you look at the Orthodox as a relig- you know, as a religious classification, you can look it up, Alexi Krindach. Um, we have a higher capita of, of educated people, like the median, right? And so what happens is you get into this realm where people have long forgotten their, you know, their Greek drunk papu. <laughs> you know what I mean? Who came over, like they've they've moved past that. They move past some of those more base sins and they get into this these more um you know the the right-handed soft you know uh not soft skills but soft sins you know the sins of uh the more subtle ones sure. right um and so when that happens interestingly enough you know it begins paradoxically it sometimes it gets harder for them to kind of imagine that next level up and how those people who are on that next level up are, are just, they I feed off to. power. But the, what I'm trying to get at here is that's their own kind of like psychological um, protection, right? Because if they were to actually stop and just see how they're not that far removed from that, because their ability to get whatever they want, isn't that far removed, right? You're not struggling for your meal. You're not, you know what I mean? Do you have enough money to kind of do whatever well, you do? Well, especially relative to most people in the world. Because I think that this is the sickness, that this is the blind spot of the West, mm-hmm. like of the developed West, mm-hmm. right? Is like, man, we, you don't know, you don't know, we got, we got homeless people with cell phones, man. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, we got overweight on. homeless people. Yeah. You know? Which is wild that it's, it's like, wild. yo, the one thing that's never going to happen to you is the thing that, that, if you were poor was the biggest threat to you, which is you're going to starve to death. Right. 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 Um, Father, the, mm-hmm. the prayer, the sins that are named in the same from prayer, is there commonality among the, the sloth, lesser power and idol talk? Like there, it seemed like there could have been a good amount of sins for him to pick from. Why did he focus in on those three? Is there like a, something that he's especially trying to work on there? Like sloth, lesser power and idol talk. Well, I'm not an expert on on the Saint Ephraim prayer, but I do know that you know when you read of Agrius, um, like those first works of Agrius, like in the Philokalia, he talks about these first three soldiers, which precede everyone else. Which is, um, uh, let me let me remember, they're it's like the gluttony. scouts. Yeah, they're like the scouts. It's like it's like gluttony. Oh man, can't be forgetting this. Like gluttony, um, I want to say, is it is it is it gluttony, avarice? Uh, and I'm trying to remember what what that third one is. It might be, it might be lust. Um, but these three foot soldiers, when they they're like shock troops, and and they're the first ones that kind of come in, and when they break. They kind of like break down the walls. All the other more subtle passions come in. Okay. Right? Sure. So if you think about um, the lust for power leads to pride, obviously, right? Um, the idle talk is is vanity, um, and it also leads to slander, right? And you also see that um, you know. Sloth is is interesting too because sloth leads to despondency and despair, and despair is the ultimate end goal, right? Because the end goal of like, for instance, you know, the end goal of lust is what, right? The end goal of lust for a young man, you know, in this day and age, is is really he wants the the devil wants you to get into despair, right? He wants you to feel like there's no hope. I keep uh... struggling with this, right? And then that despair is where you ultimately give up on God, right? And so okay. despair, the the devil is is very keen on having, um, you know, 
something that doesn't seem seemingly as bad and maybe even to some degree may seem like good, right? Make way for something so much more worse, right? But what's interesting is that it's this weird thing because that, that even that more pernicious passion is really the thing that motivates that initial one that seems innoc innocuous. So right? that's the commonality between the reaction of the Olympics thing and like say self abuse is the, the, the end is the, is bringing you to a state is bringing you to like a spiritual state. It's not even the thing itself. It's the reaction to the thing. That, so to sum this up, but this is why we're saying the the outrage to all of this, the outrage to everything that we always talk about is really the point. Mm -hmm. Because that outrage is, is now That's is being motivated way. for something far much more pernicious and worse for you. That's what that's what primes you. Right. So for instance, for instance, let me just forgive me. Forgive me, uh Cyprian. Like No, go ahead. Just on like because let's just bring it down just a little a, a level for some people. So um, everyone's just like, you know, maybe they are, maybe they're not. Time's moving so much fa more faster, right? But everyone might still be caught up on like just the assassination and still kind of like following along that narrative, right? Let's say, right? But what I would submit to you is that the person who, who's really caught up in that narrative Right. We we're revealing, you know, if you will, this kind of like um, Osmandeus character, Peter Thiel, who you don't understand is really, you know, you're looking at these real obvious, you know, you're looking for a Dr. Doom or something like, you know, even a Dr. Doom, you're looking for like a, a Sandman or something. You're looking for some very obvious bad guy. But the reality is, is that um, what is what is the real threat? To, to your life, okay? Um, this is going to be redundant, but I just want to get through this because I, I, I want people to kind of see this. We've talked about this before. It's terrible that the libraries have been poisoned and that you can't send your kid to a library. That's very terrible, right? Um, and it's terrible, you know, and this is the whole thing we can get into. It's terrible, the uh, immigration situation in America and what mm -hmm. and what's the fruit of that, right? Um, on multiple levels, not just not just the very real um, uh, narcotic issue, which is real. That's the that fentanyl thing is real. It's not even if anyone even if anyone even questions it. I'm telling you, the fentanyl thing is real. Like the zombie people are real. Like that's a thing. Okay. And that a big part of that's like the border, or whatever. But it's get, the drugs have always come to the border. Who controls the border, yeah. right? But what I, I'm trying, what I'm trying to set up here is that um, you get the people on the left to be thirsting and hungering for solutions to things like the border um, by appealing to their self righteousness, by appealing to certain things in regards of their philosophical construct right and this is the, why the meme of uh aoc and all in all white yeah. the all white aoc crying meme yeah. right yeah and that's why these people will be all for surveillance state are you following me they're all for the, they're all for yep yep big brother but guess who's going to be for big brother now too the because the the people how do you how do you get this across the board well, you get it across the board. You get people on the right. You get people. You get, how do you get the constitutionalist? How do you get the conservative right wing guy? How do you get everybody in that? How do you get the religious folk in on board with these agendas? For instance, let's just stick with one, right? Surveillance. How do you get people on board, right? Well, well you don't get it on board by, you know, positing it in a way that's going to be unattractive to them. You put it in a way that they're going to get behind. So, bing, 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 right? Now you have the, the vice president candidate, J.D. Vance, who is bankrolled by Peter Thiel. Why does that matter? Because Peter Thiel pre is presented to people as a libertarian. And like, yeah, I'm a constitutionalist. Yeah, all this stuff. But, but you look to see where the money is. 
and you look to see what kind of programs and, and so what a great support you know Trump right was also so in support of smart walls <laughs> you see them saying so it's like this is how you're going to get people to to swallow in these these actual the real problematic problems the, the last excuse me that's so redundant the real problematic issues the real problematic policies are going to come through this right and it's going to take the guy who's coming after the deep state and telling you the deep state's real and all that stuff who's being sponsored by the deep state <laughs> you know what i mean it's like and and i hate to go there exactly. because exactly because i know that you know this is like I'm trying to have a real path moment in this sense, but like this is the thing is that do not put your it's so funny because we probably should have switched. I was thinking we should have switched thumbnails like the thumbnail from last week should or from the other week should have been, you know, Christ, the emperor, the patrocrator and the mm. Byzantine, whatever. That's what we should have done anyways. Um, but the point being is. All of these all these movements are going to come because, you know, you want to tighten up the border, the greater, you know, um, surveillance and security control, like all those things, like, and people say, no, no, no. But I'm telling you, all it's going to take is your favorite talking head to posit it, it in the way they want. It's already, it's already been done, right? That's it. Repeal the Patriot Act. Oh, forgive me. Trump mm -hmm. did, right? He repealed the Patriot Act, right? I don't think so. Did he? I don't um, think so. <laughs> that's no. my point. No, it's never, been, it's never been. It's never been. It's never been rebuilt, right? It's never I mean, been you're still it taking off your shoes at. You're still taking off your shoes at the airport, guys. It won't be. It won't be repealed. It won't be repealed. And and people can be like, oh well, blah blah blah. But I'm like, no. Which no. one is it, man? Is somebody? If somebody really is against the deep state and they're really a maverick and they're really doing their own thing, either they are or they aren't. Which which one is it? I mean, it? Pe people people act like you didn't get four years of this dude. It's like he was already in that office for four years. And they're like, he's going to do this. He said, well, why didn't he do it last time? Yeah. Well, yeah. the deep state wouldn't. And it's like, well, then, it, well, then yeah, how do you say he's going to do it now? Did the deep then state go away? Yeah, then he's not effective. Then he's not effective then. Like, like, if he's truly combating the powers and the powers still exist, he's not effective. Like nothing's different. I haven't seen the great like what was it, like a like um a, a SWAT team swarm of the Oscars to arrest every like you know whatever. Trust the plan, Andrew. I Trust know. the plan, Andrew. Trust but, the plan. <laughs> I mean, what was, and then what was the other one that John F. Kennedy Jr. was going to come back and in uh, Dallas on, or whatever? And it's like come on, man. You know, that Trust whenever, the plan, Andrew. Trust whenever, the plan. So, it's not so, often. Which, which this is funny because. I would say that's our narrative, which is trust the plan, but whose plan? Because exactly because as it's been laid out by by the church, the prophecies of the elders, the scriptures, it's like just so everyone knows it you may have little pockets of repentance, but it doesn't end with like I've been tripping out. Like we've already known people are on the Messiah trip, a Messiah tip with with but I'm like some of the stuff I've seen, wow! Yeah. Like, yeah, it is it is wild. It's like it it's almost like Jesus is celebrating. Like, finally, my main man can get in there, and I and I can get <laughs> something done. King yeah. Jesus needed yeah. Trump. You know what I mean? It's just like, yeah. And so the thing, which is, is by is, definition antichrist, which that is that that notion is by definition antichrist. You know. And it's interesting too because I was listening to um, oh, a homily by a saint. I can't remember who it is off the top of my head, but he talked about the fact that um, in the epistles, um, Saint Paul. I mean, oh, it's the, the spirit of Antichrist. Um, the foreign is by Archbishop. Um, I'm very sorry, Averki, 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 yeah, Averki. And he starts talking about um, struggle for virtue. By the way, just a shout out to everybody. Hmm. If you want to look for a, a modern classic to pick up and read, Struggle of Virtue by Archbishop of Rookie. Anyway, sorry, yeah. Brother Andrew. No, it's it was this whole um shying away from the conversation around the Antichrist is one of the symbols of like you're gonna fall for the Antichrist because like in the epistles, 
And I can't remember if you said St. Peter or St. Paul. I'm sorry. One of those two wonderful, wonderful holy men wrote, did not shy away from the spirit on talking about the Antichrist very early on. He was like, no, this is going to happen. This is going to be a thing. These are the things to be looking out for. And it's not like a one for one. Um, and I don't think it's, he's capital A, but I think it's not a one for one, but there are some real similarities. It's like, no, it's this whole moralism this like no trust me i can fix things mm -hmm. like my power is great like and he will offer like wealth and prosperity and all this stuff i'm like like it's not like a one for one but you can see the spirit there if you're looking for it um and if you're not looking for it then something's wrong because this guy should be sending red flags all over the place i mean any mural that has Trump in the Oval Office with Christ just like massaging him. That's a really popular pose. I don't know if you guys have seen Christ is always massaging Trump yeah. for some reason. Like I and I don't know. It's like I guess it's, the dude must be it, really stressed. Like it's, so, it's weird because I I think <clears throat> kind of like you know some of the con like you know I'm not a contrarian type of thing, but interestingly enough, <laughs> from my perspective, <laughs> I. I I, I believe, which is obviously why I hold it, I believe that is the Christian disposition, though. Not to be contrarian, but to be frank, like leery, suspicious, however you want to look at it, of, of the one who is doing what you want. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, like that's, that's... Well, because, I, we're, not, because that's, we're not purified, so what we want is a problem. Yeah. yeah like, there you go, Cyprian. Yeah. It boggles my mind that, and again, um, I understand. It doesn't boggle my mind. I get it. I shouldn't have said that. Like, I understand the very natural notion of just, you know, wanting to what what someone perceives to be, you know, live in peace, and and we do want to live in peace. We we pray for that, but the reality is, is that that tension, which is what we're called to to hold. Mm. would always have us look at not the one who's doing the obvious, like Nero is obvious. Yeah. Yeah. Nero is, is, is obvious. That's not, that yeah. isn't where the danger comes from. I, I think, I think that disposition is the proper Christian disposition is to be like, well, let's just be a little suspicious when someone's promising us the world. Cause guess what? Isn't that how Satan comes first? Satan doesn't. Yes. Satan doesn't come, you know, in a way where he, very few people are at that level where, where Satan has to always come as he is. Most yeah. people, the demons are coming at you in a way that is that is appealing to you. <laughs> that's that's. But even even at the time, even by the time that somebody has purified themselves enough to the point where Satan comes as he is for the for an entire period before that, he had come as the as the deceiver and then a very nice you know as an angel of light being like hey i know you want this oh this is going to make your life better oh don't worry about carrying that cross yeah it's yeah. fine put it down come over here i've got something much more entertaining and better for you and yeah that's but that's but i think father that that and it has that's the that's the irony of the whole like Oh, I'm going to get enraged at this thing that's making a mockery of Christianity. And it's like, yo, if you see it to get enraged at it, if you can see it, it's not what you think it is. Like the motivation behind it is not what you are raging at. Well, I want to even go drop it down another level and like, let's talk about like real life application of that. Um, the state shouldn't be doing the work of the church. There shouldn't be so many nonprofits mm. and nonprofits mm. as an entity of themselves. 100%. Yes. Right. 100%. Because they're like fallen angels. They eventually, yeah. they want the worship of themselves. Yes. Right. So yeah. nonprofits end up existing for the sake of themselves. Yes. You have to find things Always. to do. Always. Going, right. Always. That's like, I don't know, just trying to break down some mechanics. I guess maybe someone gets it. Maybe most people get it. But like, this is what we're talking about when we're talking about this very subtle passing 
between you know the material and the immaterial the seen and the unseen where we're talking about the powers and the principalities it's like these manifestations right this is how you can begin to understand these things right like that movement of wanting to exist for yourself right for the sake of itself a nonprofit, right that's what demons do this is why they wanted worship as bacchus they wanted to be worshiped as fill in the blank, whatever mythological mm-hmm. God, right? They they no longer want, they didn't want to tend to their original purpose, right? So mm. when, you, when you begin to understand that this is the kind of movement of things, then you can look to see it's like, okay, the, the state shouldn't be handling those things. That's what the church should be doing. So the church no longer... Is, is known for hospitals. The church is no longer known for adoption and, and, and taking in kids, healing people with, you know, spiritual maladies, meaning addiction, mental health, quote unquote, like personality disorders, a lot of stuff. That should be the church. The church should be the one tending to, you know, the new lepers. That's, that's who the church... But mm-hmm. what happens is, the farming out of those things to the state, this is the real life results. This is why what we're talking about matters. It isn't just kind of like whining, complaining, and trying to be edgelord about something. It, it really matters. This is why the real power that the church should have, we don't wield because of this movement of relegating these things, right? Because if we don't understand how, how power actually works in the world. And of all people, we're supposed to. But again, you know, the sons of this world are more shrewd than the sons of light, right? That's that's what the Lord said. And it's because we don't understand that the power that we should be wielding, which we did at one point in time, is, a, is the power of to do the work as the body of Christ in the world. Look, <laughs> there's so much atheism because of the the absence of the body of Christ functioning as the body of Christ in the world. When people don't see legitimately Christians doing corporal work, when they don't see Christians, again, tending to the poor, running hospitals, um, adopting kids, right? Um, really dealing with those who are, you know, underserved, right? Like, the whole, did you feed me? Was I in prison? Like, that is part of the trap. That's why the right-handed temptation is so bad because the, the temptation from the right keeps us from being the body of Christ. The temptation from the left just upsets us and gets us to be outraged, right? But the temptation from the right is actually the problem because it keeps us from being the body of Christ, because we begin to say, oh, that social justice stuff, the Christian isn't supposed to be tending to the poor, this or that. We're not supposed to be tending to the poor for the sake of the poor, per se. We're supposed to be tending to the poor because that's what Christ wants to do. So what happens is when people don't see that happening in the world, they go like, ah, what a sham, Christianity. Oh, what a sham, the church, right? And that's that then gives rise to people being like, well... This here isn't what it says it is. So where is the real power? Where is the real... Now, don't get me wrong. People are going to be led away by their lusts, of course. But if you understand what I'm saying, this is where a lot of young people no longer wanted to... You remember when that whole... I mean, I don't know what gender... I mean, remember Tom's and all that? Remember Tom's? The shoes? Oh, yeah. like where you would buy the shoes and then some yeah. percentage would go to like, I don't, I forget yeah. what it was, environmental causes or like people yeah, in the yeah. rainforest Whatever or the something. See, the thing about Tom's something? is, Tom's is a, is a cultural marker. Hmm. Tom's was this marker for like, like, is that millennials? Like what generation? And don't yeah. worry, we're not going to get there bashing millennials, but my no, no, it's, it's, it's millennials. It's millennials. millennials like, it was that marker of, no, we want to do something. Right, we want action. We want to be able to do something meaningful, which isn't wrong, but it becomes misplaced. Like they call it, like socially responsible Correct. economics or something like that. Correct. Yeah. 
because a lot of those kids were the kids who just were Christians or raised Christians and they left Christianity because mm -hmm. of this very thing I'm talking about. They saw that to be a Christian meant to be like, don't smoke, don't have sex, don't listen to right. rock and roll, and just, you know, kind of, that's, that's what Christianity was to them. So when something like Tom's comes along or something like, if I wear a mask, I'm saving grandma, right. they go for it. Because Vegans, the, the, the vegan thing. It comes from it's, the same it, place. It, it's it's an actionable thing, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that comes from the vacuum that's created when when that kind of pharisaical movement develops within the life of the church. So and that mm. that pharisaical movement is fomented really and and embodied by that you know what tends to be a temptation on the right, but also from you know, right-leaning conservative, quote-unquote, politics, you know? So, again, this is kind of the, as with most things, this is probably just the work, the the wave of social justice, you know, the social justice phenomenon is kind of, again, not necessarily the Orthodox, but the Christian church in America kind of getting its comeuppance. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, this was something that you guys, you let your, you, you let your candle, your lampstand go out like yep. pretty much on this yep. and somebody else picked it up yep. and somebody who didn't necessarily understand what it was or what it was for was starting yep. doing it for the sake of itself, which is by the yep. way, a whole, and to speak to father's point about um, nonprofits, I've been in meetings with nonprofits that are there to help supposedly cure and help prevent the spread of, drug abuse and, and alcohol abuse <clears throat> whose owner is legitimately angry and wondering what the heck is going on when their beds aren't full. And like, you right. know, like they're like, isn't that the point? The point is that our beds genuinely or uh, gradually start to get less and less full because we're yeah. doing our job. If we're doing our yeah. job, the population we're here to help goes away. But if we're not doing our job, if we're concerned about securing more fun funding, we're worried about looking good for the next like potential investor. We need, we need beds full. We need our staff looking sharp and we need everybody on their toes. So because we want to continue to exist as an entity, otherwise we don't have jobs. So it's the homeless the perverse industry. incentives. Yeah. Perverse yeah. incentives. Yeah. And that's, and that's always the issues that people's motivations, people's priorities are, are disordered. Right. Mm -hmm. But in the church, they become where they're supposed to be properly ordered. Right. So the master said, the poor you have with you always. Was that now an injunction against serving the poor? Absolutely not. No. And, and the way we play that out is like, you know, our worship, right? Our Eucharistic gathering is the place in which we, we tend to the master. Right. And we also recognize that that is what allows us to go out and then continue that, you know, liturgy outside elsewhere. Um, you know, John, St. John Chrysostom, right. You won't see Christ in the child. So you don't see Christ in the beg in the beggar. Right. So mm -hmm. it's a shame because saying that there's all these, you know, hyper, hyper trads who will be like, yeah, you know, that's, that's a social justice. No, it's not. It's just, it's just being a Christian. There's nothing Christian about being indifferent and cruel. And then saying that your indifference and your cruelty is really just you being, you know, not a sucker for, you know, social justice or just, um, you know, not being whatever, woke or whatever. That, that's, that's cruelty it has nothing to do with, with being a Christian. And, and well, that it is the great is, trick. It is a great trick. Forgive me, Father. It's the great trick of, uh, of, the whole social justice thing is to, to turn people in that way to be like, oh, because my enemies are doing this, that right. means it's something that I should not do. And it's like, no, that's the trick. Right. That's that was the trick in the first place. <laughs> right. 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 And that and, and that's what happens when we when we keep our eyes elsewhere. Like if, mm -hmm. if, if you're genuinely see, this is this is the thing about looking at yourself. <laughs> when you're actually looking at yourself not at your neighbor good or bad guess what happens you you change 
Like that's mm-hmm. that is the process of of purification and moving into illumination and God willing deification. Like that's you you can't do it any other way. And so when people get their eyes on something else, whether it's the outrage or 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 whether it's like the envy, right? Um, either way, you're going to end up with murder, right? Because that's why the Jews crucified Christ, right? Mm-hmm. The Pharisees crucified Christ because of envy, right? So when people are like, I just want to get mine, you know, I'm going to make sure you get your comeuppance. And like, no, I'm tired of this. Mm-hmm. I want power now, right? That that back and forth, right? Everyone's blind, right? And And that opting out, right? Christ teaches us to opt out of that vicious cycle, right? And the only way for us to opt out is by looking at him, right? Mm-hmm. It, it, because it can't be an abstract concept, right? It has to be for yes. the sake of love. Yeah. And if there's <clears throat> worship is attention, and then your attention to the reaction, if you're giving attention to right. the thing even right. if it's of a quote unquote right. of a, a good emotion quote unquote and the right. outrage that's supposed to be felt right. we're still giving it attention and Can I- they, it's like they're like <laughs> demons are like andy dick the celebrity they don't care what kind of attention they get they'll get good yeah. attention or bad attention it yeah. doesn't matter like they just want attention and i just want to god bless you andrew because again i just I like this back and forth of like, here's the thing, and it feels abstract to people. I just want to drop it down. Here's what this looks like. You have no control of your emotions. That's why you need to teach yourself. You need to teach your children. You, you, you need to have a sense of emotional maturity, right? You need to have a sense of being able to have emotional intelligence and be able to regulate these things because you begin to – emotions are like angels, like fallen angels. They want you to serve them, right? So that person who just is out of control, right, and they are just consumed with their feeling, right, that feeling of envy, of anger, depression, self-pity, that now becomes the thing that, that they're worshiping, that now begins to, you know, possess them and take them over. But see, Christ teaches, right, no, you need to die. And you need to turn away from that. And when you turn away from that, when you when you trust me, when you realize, yeah, I understand you're feeling neglected right now, but if you actually trust me and believe me, then you know that everything I, I'm doing, everything for 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 your transformation, for you to be with me, for you to have life abundantly, then you'll be able to be like, I'll endure this, Lord, because I know this is going to bring me something else. And that endurance looks like me not listening to my feelings. Yeah. Right. It's it's very it becomes very practical. Right. It becomes very practical. This is one of those things where if you want to scale it up a little bit and talk about business, it's like, you know, a good business has its its um you know, it's kind of like uh not its vision, but you know, it has its um this is the thing that we do. It's like niche. a mission a mission statement. Has its mission statement and knows what it does. It doesn't get its, its eyes off of that, like this is what we do. Right. Yeah. And we're not we're not gonna look and see where the winds are going, right? Because that may get us a, a good one, mm-hmm. but it also could tank us really quick. We're just gonna be mm-hmm. steady and just do what we're supposed to do. That's that's what makes a business successful. It's like, yeah, hey man, I cut grass, I do this, I'm just steady yep. with that, I build it. It's like, yeah, it may not be glamorous, like you know, a tattoo artist, and it may not be as high paying as you know, uh you know, IT guy, whatever, but I cut grass and I got a lot of, you know, I got, I got a business and my kids, you know, are inheriting a business. You know what I'm saying? That, Mm -hmm. that modest, humble Mm -hmm. focus on a business level allows for success. Well, it's the same thing in the spiritual life. Father, father, forgive me because I, I, this is such a good point. The other thing about it is that I just want to add on is because I've experienced it myself. Like, no, you have to articulate that, mm-hmm. like write it down, say it. Mm-hmm. Everybody who's involved, you've got to be communicating it back and forth to each other all the time because it's so easy to lose sight and the other idols and the other little gods sneak in. 
and get the attention if you're not constantly articulating like, this is why we're here. This is what we're doing. This is what this is. This is what we're oriented toward. This is who we are, right? That's, you have to do that all the time. Otherwise, psh, forget about it. Forget about yeah. it. And you can't and be you, successful without it. And you know how that plays out on the lower level too? Mm. On the personal level, spiritually speaking, it's the creed. Yeah, yes. that's what I was going to say. 100%. <laughs> 100%. It's the There's creed. There's a reason we say it's it in every creed. liturgy. Yeah, I mean, we have to yeah. reestablish. And like Father said before, if you're struggling with unbelief, say the Nicene Creed. I mean, it's it's yep. because, yeah, you're reorienting yourself back to this is why I'm here. Like, this is this is yep. the goal. The goal is the heavenly kingdom is Christ. And mm-hmm. anything else not used in that correctly is a distraction. And so having to reorient yourself back towards, you know, it's like that. Oh, what was that terrible movie? Um with Will Smith, seven pounds or whatever. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Where he, he like accidentally killed a family in a car accident one night because he was drunk, and so he no, decides to kill himself and donate all his organs to seven people. Seven people oh. who need him. Yeah, it's like uh, God, that's slip under the radar. I never heard of that. Yeah, so I remember, I remember the plot of this. I didn't realize it was Will Smith. I may have to go and watch it. Is it terrible? Wait uh well i just did just go on record as calling it a terrible movie but now that i'm thinking okay. about it maybe it's not but uh, the premise is kind of interesting yeah he like as a way of um you know making amends for his night out of i think maybe even killing his own wife i can't remember um oh my goodness but he had just got some big promotion and was having the time of his night the time of his oh. life and on the way home he killed a family or something like that on accident so he kills himself by putting his jellyfish in a bathtub filled with water so that his organs will remain undamaged so they can go to, like, Woody Harrelson plays a blind guy. I think he gets his eyes. Someone else gets his heart. You know, all, he just basically donates his liver or whatever. I don't even remember why I'm talking about this in the first place. But I had a point. I can't remember what it was. But... um it, I think the point was just to make a movie recommendation, Andrew, because <laughs> now I'm know like, I, I guess I got to... I don't know if I recommend it. it I remember it being well now, of- but now you've piqued everybody's interest, so they got to go watch it. Like whether you recommended it or not, it's like, oh, well, that sounds the jellyfish alone. The jellyfish scene alone sounds like it's worth the watch. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, that's what it was. Every time, because he calls Woody Harrelson, and he's trying to test if he's a good a good man. He's blind. Woody Harrelson's blind, so he, he's like a IT guy or a, like a customer support guy. So he calls and screams at him. Basically, it's like he can hear him using the the voice to chat or the text to chat so that the guy can see what's going on to the computer. He's like, what are you yeah. blind? Like you, you can kind of blind idiot because like cussing him out and basically seeing if the guy loses his patience with him and he doesn't. And when he hangs up the phone, obviously, he feels like a real heel. So he starts naming the people that he killed. He's like he starts like as a way of like recommitting, like he's naming the people uh, that he killed. That's what I was. That's the whole point of what I was saying. It's reorientation of he's yes. obviously attempting to dissuade himself from the emotions that he's feeling, trying to distance himself, and as a matter of like gotcha. social, like emotional regulation. So I'm sorry, that was totally a derail. Like that was a total <laughs> derailment. But it. Oh, and you know, there's actually a term. There's there's a business term for. What happens if you don't continue to reorient? It's called mission creep. Yeah. yeah. Creep. I think it's also mm-hmm. a military term. It's a military yeah. term as well. And, and in products, it's called feature creep. To where like, and, and it's like, whoa, well, what's creeping in? And it's like, it's little gods. So it's, it's little idols that, of attention that are creeping in. It's something that, so it's like, if, in like mission creep, it's like you have a, a goal and this other little thing kind of gets thrown on, and you should yeah. become more oriented towards that new thing, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I want to make sure we're all on the same page. But I think, but I think that that happens. I mean, it's a spirit because that's a spiritual phenomenon. Holy, I mean, we could talk about it in these kind of materialist terms, but when you talk about, oh, we're going to make a mission statement for our business, that's spiritual in nature. Like mm-hmm. what you're participating in there, that's like that's spiritual because you're you're like you're actually like projecting, you're speaking, speaking forth what you're going to participate in. Mm-hmm. Right? There's a there's a well, con, the lines, there's a like oh it, 
well, it reveals too what you're going to put everything towards, right? Sac what so you're going to sacrifice for. Yeah. What are you going to sacrifice for? What are you putting the energies? What are you? What are you putting your energies towards, right? Yes. To manifest and and the reality is, is that and I, and I think kind of dropping it down again for people. This is why, like, yeah, on some level, there are these policies that, um, you know, you'll, you'll find yourself like, well, yeah, I clearly would, you know, don't want to have, like, let's say abortion. Okay, great. That's good. But consider this, right? Um, and I, I never hear anyone bring this up. Maybe... If we, you know, I don't want to say opted out, right? I'm not trying to get the whole like Benedict option thing, but if we opted out as a community in the sense of trying to, you know, give our pinch of incense um, so that we could participate, you know, in the public square to a, to a greater degree, if we opted out and just said like, well, let us do this. So in other words, um, you know, why aren't we having larger ministries to tend to, you know, pregnancy crisis centers? Like, don't get me wrong, we, we have them, right? But not to the degree that would even begin to, um, you know, bring into challenge, you know, uh, Planned Parenthood. You know what I'm saying? It's like Planned Parenthood mm -hmm. is um, principality. Mm hmm Right, it has millions and millions of dollars and resources flowing in and out of it, and it's affecting the the spiritual reality of, of untold millions and millions of of souls, right? Mm -hmm. And it made its way through there through the high priestess of Margaret Sanger. Like I'm bringing yes. all of this down for people so they can understand. It's like. I think what happens is, is people get thrown off when we use the language of principalities and, and, and gods, but like she, she was a priestess and she yes. ushered in, right. She ushered in the, the, the worship of Moloch. Right. And, yes. and brought about, right. Brought about very real consequences into the world. Untold yes. millions. Are you following yes. me? So yes. the problem is that, you know, I'm not going to get into the, the debate over the efficacy of the quote unquote Christian protester, right? I have, I have a kind of opinion on that, right? A person outside, right? Um, but the one thing I would say is whatever measure of efficacy is or is not there, there's no way you could compare it if, you know, on a, on a larger scale, Christians and the church said, we are going to, to do this. We are, we are, we are mm -hmm. going to be the body of Christ in, in that kind of embodiment manifestation sense, right? We're going to be the hands, feet, whatever, Christ. Yep. And we're going to, like Elijah, come against the priests of Baal. Are you following what yes. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And yes. in order to do that, you'll learn very quickly the God of this world, right, has his ways of trying to, you know, before any obstruction, he wants to co-opt, mm. right? He mm -hmm. wants to co-opt because obstruction makes us stronger. That's, mm -hmm. that's the thing that a lot of people, again, getting back to what we were saying earlier, I wish Christians would really understand this. Like, this is what we've been trying to say. Co obstruction makes us stronger. Like, yes. that we're, Christ built us in such a way that temptation and persecution strengthens us, right? Yes. What, what it temper, weakens tempers, us, uh, tempers us. It tempers us. What, what weakens us is the co opting. Yes. Right? And so that their temptation, their de their degeneracy is your trap. <laughs> yeah. So, so it, I think this is why I'm I'm trying to say it's like again, 
you know, however long ago we were talking about building, like we should, people should be building, right? Like, the, like I think this is great. So, um, you know, if Trump gets in office, which I don't know, just throwing it out there to be spicy, I don't, you know, but I think Cruella DeVille might win. <laughs> you know That's, what I mean? Right. I, I was thinking about that today. I was like, I was pretty confident a couple of weeks ago if we we're going against, you know, Mr. Burns. But if we're talking yeah. about Cruella DeVille, I was like, uh, she, she has yeah. a real shot, actually. So, yeah, she does. Yeah, Cru- Cruella DeVille might. And, and there was that weird, um, I'm trying to think. I saw it floating around. Who knows, who knows if it's true, but it's just good, it's just good TV, right? But there was that um, quote-unquote prophecy about uh, there was a president who said, oh, there'll be a female president one day. Did you, you guys see that floating around? Mm-mm. No. Um, maybe one of you could look it up, but there was a, a president who said, Oh, yeah, there was someone who said, Oh, there'll be a female oh, president. It was, but, um, know, it was, was it Henry Ford? It wasn't Henry Ford, it was wasn't someone... Ford. What do you say? There'll Basically, be a female president, but she'll be the last president. No, there'll be a female president, but the way she'll get in is because she'll be a vice president, and yeah that other president will, you know, have to step down yep. or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Yep. But the thing is, is, you know, I'm just, I'm just getting into it. Oh, um, it was Gerald Ford. So, was it Ford? Yeah. I, I just, who himself, who himself came in that way. So, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. I just, he would I know. Find it, I, he would know. <laughs> I just find it interesting because, um, you know, the reality of how all that happened, um, and the the reality that you know the the kind of I don't want to say charade, but basically the charade that there's <laughs> that there's that there's actually some sort of um legitimacy. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say opportunity for it to affect change. I mean, I wanna be like, you know, side no. night pill guy, but you know. No. Well, I don't know. It's I, that was it. Won't it. matter, right? It doesn't matter if we if it doesn't we matter as the church I, are doing those things, right? Like it's not going to well, matter. They're they're still Father, forgive me. There's I I think it goes right to the point of what's been going on has been this again this breakdown. We talked about it before, but it's like everybody who's voting in this election now. With Cruella, Cruella and uh, and the false prophet, right? Everybody who's voting is voting against the other guy, right? There is yeah. no one who is voting for them. Like seriously, I mean, there are well, some people who are so well, deluded who are vo- who are know. voting. For, they're yeah. well. Hold on, hold on. The people voting for Orange Man are only voting for him as their champion over all of these things that they don't like. They're not voting for him because if you asked them, okay, well, Marimba wow. Ani said this. She said, if somebody approaches you and tells you that they're a leader, the first thing you must do is you must ask them, what is your vision for our people? Hmm. And the thing is, like, if you were to ask either one of these people what their vision is and they couldn't tell you, they couldn't in that vision say what they were against. And they could only and who they were against, and they could only say what they were for in real terms, not we will have the greatest economy. It'll be so great. It'll be greater than anything you've ever seen. It'll be so wonderful and so good and so great. Like, no, 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 no. Like actually a vision. That's my that's my Trump. Yeah. That's my, <laughs> not bad. It's not bad. It's my yeah. Trump. The yeah. greatest greatest you know, yeah. like i can't it's it's he's a hard he's a hard guy to do because you got to do your lips like this and mine yeah. don't really go that way but neither one of them can present an actual vision neither one of them can but they could talk endlessly about what they're against mm-hmm. yeah. and how they're your champion against these things and i think that that's the like father to go back to the I mean, I know that you're not trying to say the efficacy of like the protester or whatever, but I I do think just from a a kind of a practical standpoint that it would be hard for somebody to say that if the same amount of actual like bandwidth and attention that 
is spent, let's say, on a yearly basis right now with with that protesting was instead of being spent with the protesting and was spent in cri- uh, pregnancy crisis centers, I don't think anybody would be able to say that that wouldn't move the needle. Mm. Right? Like, it w- it would, like, I think it, w- it would be, How nobody would be able How to be like, it, w- it won't move, it, that would move the needle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How would you say otherwise? I think, I, sorry, I just had a thought a second ago, but what you were saying, Cyprian, is, is no matter what, the crowd is still yelling Barabbas, like give us Barabbas because they don't <gasps> want Barabbas. They just don't want Christ to be free. Like, Boom. It's like anybody's psyched about Barabbas getting out. Like, oh, great. This, you know, nailed it. Yeah. Nailed it. So it's no matter Let what. the lesser of two evils. Mm-hmm. Well, really, like when they're like, oh, you're voting the lesser of two evils. Well, that literally is give us Barabbas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Huh. And. Yeah. So the question is, is like, it should not be for us. And, and I, I don't think it, I don't think it has to be, you know, um, because I, I, again, I think we are so envious of the, of, of the world. I mean, we all feel it. We all feel that temptation at times, you know, um, like there's sometimes I have to just, you know, kind of like slap myself on, on behalf of the church. And I just remind myself, you know, there's more people in this mega church here in town on a Sunday than all the Orthodox churches combined in Kansas City. Maybe even you in know? America. Like, well, so, I mean, maybe that's too far, but I mean, that's like, too far. But, but, but without exaggeration, for sure, just one of these mega churches I'm thinking about, which has multiple campuses, they have way more people, right? Now, does that matter? Well, not necessarily, because, you know, God likes to do this thing with numbers and he likes to whittle people, you know, he likes to whittle the numbers down to kind of prove the point. He's really into that, you know. Um, so I'm down with that. And that's why I'm saying we we shouldn't get caught up in that in regards of, you know, what what actually moves the needle, because what moves the needle is somebody like an Elijah. You know, there was one Elijah, multiple priests of Baal. You know what I mean? Um, oh, but the absolutely. thing about Elijah was Elijah was was on task. He was on the mission. You know what I, I'm saying? I can't remember. Of course, I can't remember right now. Who was the guy from the Old Testament that was like, if I can just find 500 people, like, would you spare the city? God would be like, yes, I was. Well, that's Abraham. Oh, that's Abraham. Abraham. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm sorry. I don't know why I can't remember. But like, it's funny. I never thought of it like Abraham being like, all right, so I have a deal for you. And God's like, all right, let's do this. Like, I'm really into this whole whittling down thing. Like, I'm totally getting mm-hmm. that. Like, it wasn't like Abraham kind of kind of pulling on the beard of God a little bit. This is kind of how I always pictured it. It's like, come on, can you? we can get down. What if I can find 25 people? Like, what? can you do 15? Can you go as low as 15? And God, and instead, God's like, yeah, I'm I'm down. Let's do this. Like, let's 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 find these 15 people or whatever. Like. Look at how few people it takes to save a society. Look at how few, few. Ri- how few righteous men and women it takes to save a society. And 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 you know the the interesting thing. There's actually an ancient. Um, I think it's from the it's from the Vedas, I believe, as well, where there's even a similar story. So this is like a this is this is like so universal about how few people it takes that it's like. Um, I think even in this case, it's like that the that the Ganges would recede if there could be one righteous person. The idea of one righteous person that like you would get some sort of divine intervention. But I think this is this is this is what's so wild about people wanting people thinking that there's righteousness in like, oh, we've we've got a get our gang together to oppose the wokes or we got to do whatever we it's it's like it's in mass we got to get all of these people instead of just cleaning their own cup yeah Yeah. and so i i think again this is why at least you know for me this is why this project or whatever we do is what we do is because right righteousness what is righteousness right righteousness can is only understood from god Right. Righteousness 
is is of God, the love of God, the mercy of God, the um, the humility of God, the justice of God. You know, um, that's why when you say, "Oh, you're so self righteous," the reason why that's so repugnant to us is because someone who's self righteous is someone who's pulling. They are seeing themselves as the measure and source of what is good, mm. right? Righteousness is only from God, right? And so you can't have true righteousness if people are trying to pull from another source besides the true and living God, even if it is the great and almighty Donald Trump. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. because how are we going to have those few in the society? Because it only takes a few, right? Noah, right? God preserved the world just for the sake of the righteousness of Noah, right? How should we understand that? Noah alone, right? Not only did he not have his mind constantly um, fixated on evil, why didn't he have his mind constantly fixated on evil? Because he had his mind connected to God. Like he saw, why was Noah righteous? Because of God. Because of he saw God as the only source. There was no idolatry. That's why idolatry is the theme throughout the whole Bible, and which is why what we're talking about, it's like, like Orthodox Christians, you know, people who are trying to be Christians and right, don't be idolaters, right? You're clearly like, again, you're clearly not going to look at the 500 pound black crack smoking lesbian for righteousness. That's a given. Why do we, we don't need to talk two hours about the obvious degeneracy? But we do need to talk two hours and, and day in and day out about the self-righteousness that too many of us are, are tempted by, right? Which is why looking to Christ is the only way to be righteous. And it can't be, you know, it can't be Kanye's Jesus. It has to be, yeah. it has to be like Christ, the second person of the Holy Trinity, right? Because that's the only way anyone will be found righteous. And that is the only way that God spares a nation is that there are some righteous there. See, so again, just to kind of make the, make the connections, right? Yeah. And I mean, I, I mean, maybe I'm not even holding this correctly, but St. Maximus, the confessor at one point was like, he was it, right? He was like the one guy holding it together for like a little while against um, the heresy that he I thought I had heard that before. The heresy that he was fighting, it was like the him. The one with the like, light heresy. Yeah. So it was him and like a couple other people were like the, the like. Athanasius. Athanasius yeah. against the world. Yeah. I was about I to mean, say Athanasius, the last bishop, right? One. You know, yeah. it's wild. So, yeah. That's, that's not a problem, right? It's only a problem if, if we lose sight of, you know, you can't fall into idolatry, and idolatry is not going to be the thing that you hate. <laughs> yeah. you're not gonna idolize the thing that you hate you know yeah oh that's i mean that's so that's so important that's such an important and self-evident thing that i think it's so easy to lose sight of in in all of this that it's like whatever it feels whatever is whatever it feels immediately good as like yeah this feels good for me to go in terms of my emotions that's your idol yeah. I mean, spoiler like, alert. That's it. <laughs> forgive me, spoiler alert, but I would just say, why do you think we practice asceticism? Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you can't have an right. you can't have orthodoxy without without an ascetical practice. Because yeah. asceticism is the direct work of moving away from and and being vigilant against idolatry. Mm -hmm. Don't understand. So what is asceticism, right? The, the denial of self, right? Typically yeah. through, through bodily work, right? Well, you're not going to make an idol out of, um, I don't know, what cod liver. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. No, no one's going to lose their... No one's going to lose their family and their livelihood and their faith over cod liver. No one's going to do that, you know? Mm -hmm. But you might lose your, you might lose your, your, your family over... Over Harley, I don't know. You know what I mean? It, yeah, right, 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 right. You know what I'm saying? So, so. Father, should we be like so? Because this is something that I've thought about a lot. Um, like, 
I, cause I don't really have a big problem not eating. Like that's not really a big thing for me. Right. But I, but I have other temptations, uh, a lot of it in terms of like my own, you know, pride, the way, the way that I'll speak and engage with other people that'll be like self-interested at times. And, and so like fast days, obviously during Lent, but like Wednesdays and Fridays should, is it a, is it a, I mean, of course it's always a proper practice, but like to what, to what degree is like, to what degree are the food restrictions uh, like an, entry and entry into it i'm not saying don't you know don't break the fat the fasting food restrictions but it's like if you're not if if you're not also participating in those other like in fasting from these other things that are your idols right like if you're not doing that like are you really fasting i guess do you understand the question that i'm asking like if the food because like i can go i can do a three-day water fast you know what I mean? Like for me, it's not a big deal that it's like, oh, no meat today. OK. And I'll yeah. often find myself being like, is this really asceticism for me? Do you get what I'm kind of getting at? here? Yeah. I mean, so like the devil doesn't eat. Right. Um, and the devil doesn't sleep. Um, so us not eating and not sleeping in of itself doesn't doesn't provide anything um, in of itself. But when you begin to understand that the denying of ourselves of those bodily comforts will address certain other things, right? It'll make you a lot. If you want to control lust, right? You, you fast from food, right? It's one of the many ways to do that, right? In, in that context. But something else to, to look at is, you know, it's better for you to, like someone could have, if, if this makes sense, you can have someone who's eating a steak on Friday and keeping a mean fast and have someone who's eating just, you know, lentils and water and they broke the fast all day. Right. I get it. That that's, that's a very it. real possibility because the person who's been eating steak, right. Because that's all he had. Like, yeah, just, just watch me. So it's all they had, whatever. Um, this this if this makes even sense, it's like you got a guy who's on a carnivore diet for his health, not just so he can have a shredded body, but let, let's say his health, right? Like inflammation issues. That's a thing, right? Trying to cut down inflammation, whatever. And literally all he has in there is, you know, uh he has like a chuck a chuck patty that, you're, that he has to let cook, right? On a Friday. Well, what's what's more in line with the fast? Him having anxiety and getting irritable with his wife. Why isn't there any, you know, salmon in here? And just yelling at her and, and all that. Is that keeping the fast? No. But that guy who, like, yeah, he just, he makes it simple. He doesn't have, like, two of them. He just eats one just enough to eat, right, to get some sustenance. He's not mm -hmm. spinning. Like, he's like, hey, let's, let's, hey, I'm not knocking him. I'm just saying, hey, let's, let's hit that, that new sushi joint. Because like right, yeah, exactly. even though the yeah, sushi yeah, joint yeah. is technically fasting, but you're like there's like man, let's hit that new sushi. But it joint. tastes great. It, it tastes, tastes great. great. You know no, I mean? you're not suffering at all. So, <laughs> so, so this is the way to kind of understand these things, right. you know? Um, because the bigger thing is to fast from our passions, right? It's like mm -hmm. if you're ignoring your kid because you just want to doom scroll because you're despondent, right? 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 Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay, I didn't eat any meat or have any dairy. But you ignored your kid and you're doom scrolling and you're watching right. a bunch of salacious, gossipy stuff. Right. 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 How that right. you didn't keep the fast, really. Right. You kept the letter right. of the law. You know what I mean? You strained out the nap, but you swallowed the camel. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I think that, like, that's, and, you know, if someone's talking about, their fasting or their prayer rule or whatever it's just like you know like generally speaking i don't know i'm sorry about five minutes ago i got real real sleepy i think i just like it just hit me i was just like uh so i think if you went back and watched that i was kind of like started to slump down just a little bit just like that so uh, might not be one of our longer episodes but i think <laughs> i like, cut it right there because 
I think I'm out. I'm down for the count. All right. Fair enough. There's still miles to go before I can sleep tonight. So, ow. Oh. Yeah. But anyway, nice. glory to God. I'm not worried about it. I have actually found, speaking of sleep, I've actually found as I've gotten older, I need less and less sleep. I just think mm-hmm. that that's kind of the way that the body is. You're maybe more just okay with being uncomfortable. Um, yeah. But uh, I think that, it, and I've had to check myself at least two to three times this last week or whatever of being like, um, Oh, father, I talked to you a long time ago about how I was kind of going through the same thing. I was praying to St. John of San Francisco about Mm -hmm. like, Hey, help me to not maybe. And I was thinking like, could you give me energy, like kind of energy to kind of keep going? You're like, well, don't do that because you know, you'll suddenly develop a case of insomnia. Suddenly the kids won't sleep at night, you know, that kind of stuff. I had to really check myself of being like, cause I'm an addict. So I was like, oh, this whole only getting like, you know, a couple hours of sleep or whatever. And night's going to make me feel super weird. Like, I kind of really like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. And I saw this, like, really, like, me chasing that. Not to, like, oblivion, but me mm. really ending up in a place where I'm not, like, really, I can't do that anymore. Um, it's been touched on by certain saints. But, like, when you practice certain asceticism, that's like beyond you or it lacks grace or you're doing you're swallowing the camel while straining out the the gnat uh that thing becomes for you later on like really like you can't really touch it again at least for a little while but you know forgive me i think that's a key thing about all this how all this ties in because whether it's like looking for the idol looking for the thing um all of these things they're motivated by like even the outrage right that's why you do scroll that's what the dopamine is all about which is it's about the chase it's it's not about the the acquiring that's what addiction is yeah right? it's not it's it's not about the chasing acquiring. the dragon chasing it's, the dragon that's why you chase yeah. the dragon it's it's about the chase it's the same thing with the outrage that's why None of these candidates will really tell you what they're about. It's about what they're against, because right, what because right. what you're what you're not what you're against that is that fuels that sense of chasing and like yeah we, we gotta get after that thing. That's why when yes. Saint Paul says contentment with godliness is great gain, like what we're looking yes. for as Orthodox Christians is is a contentment, and that's yes. that is one of the end goals of asceticism is to get to a place of contentment, right? Mm. Yes. I'm not, I'll never be content getting the meal that I always want. I will never mm. be content getting as much sex as I want. I will never yeah, be yes. content getting as much anything I want. I will only find yes. contentment, right, in being content in Christ and being in content whether abased or abounding. Yeah. That's, that's the point of asceticism, right? And that's why this obsession with politics and what we have is not orthodox because it's fundamentally about chasing the thing. Wow. It's not about, yeah. it's, it's not contentment. So wow. we need to have ascetical practice and expression in all these areas of our life. We should be an ascetical people. You, we don't need to be running around in, in, you know, burlap sacks. Right. But at the same time, you know, cause it's not about even like denying, cause watch, it's not even about denying the good things of life. Right. Because. Right. Asceticism will t- will teach you to appreciate food and appreciate. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Right. That that it'll teach you to be content. Right. We're not ascetical because we disdain the body. We're not gnostics. Right. It's about coming to a place of, of contentment with godliness. Yeah. Right. That's great game. I mean, what is the greatest spice is hunger. Like hunger makes anything mm-hmm. taste good because suddenly yeah. your bar is so low just the sustenance alone is satisfactory even if yeah. it's like something that you don't true want. contentment yeah mm-hmm. it's being cool with the, the cucumber instead of a burger it's like man mm-hmm. it just feels so good to have this cute it has so feel so good as something in my stomach mm-hmm. i don't care that this isn't like the wendy's double baconator thing whatever i wanted so anyway um so that's that that's what i'm gonna do for tonight um Cool. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, we okay. So, Father, do you want to discuss the Christianities again? 
Uh, you want to check the plug last week? It's just that documentary. Um, yeah, I'll just check it link. out. I'll the trying to still fund it. Um, John here is friend friend of the community. Um, Father Peter, um, you know, basically this wonderful um, documentary. You know, uh, we have the link. We have the link in the descriptions, but you can support it. Get out there and. Let's get it. Let's give it a good push. So, um, speaking of which, real quick, and we don't have to dwell on this. Did you guys see the trailer for the new Matt Walsh? Am I racist? Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah, no. I think I will be avoiding that one. I know that the last one was uh, like that. Seems like what is a woman? Yeah, what is a woman? But like, um, I think I, would... I mean, I think he's just doing a thing now. You know I what I mean? So. Like now, now he's just he's got a formula, he's and it's like, shtick. yeah, when you've got a shtick, then yeah, yeah. we're good. Yeah. yeah, this one's great because he goes undercover. He's got the <laughs> wait. He goes undercover as a black man. No, he goes undercover. Oh my like... gosh, that would be a totally different movie. <laughs> like, oh yeah, my that god, would be, that would be. Tropical. I would actually go see that. Like, I would absolutely <laughs> go see that. No, well, Eddie tropical Murphy, Thunder. Eddie Murphy already did it. Eddie well, Murphy already did it. <laughs> it's not Tropical Thunder. What is it? Uh, it's Tropic what? Thunder. Tropic yeah, Thunder. Tropic Thunder. Downey Jr. Yeah, Tropic Robert Thunder. Robert Downey yeah, Jr. Yeah. is black. Oh, that's, yeah. I mean, you you couldn't make that movie now, but that role is one of his best. That is one of the funniest it's movies. It's incredible. Ever it's, it's, that's an incredible movie. It's incredible. He's like, I'm the dude disguised as a new, another dude playing in <laughs> like that whole it's been forever since that movie's come up like three times recently it he's is so it's it like, might it might be his greatest it, i mean he's a great actor no, but it might be his greatest his role standout, like his most challenging and greatest role the standout role from that movie is tom cruise i don't give that oh, oh him, so good what's his name morty so, what what is he he's like remember. the producer or whatever yeah and he's so, da- when he starts dancing oh bottom my. jeans like it's bro bro it's, it's, bro. it, it's such a good movie it's such a good movie. and then matthew mcconaughey the entire time is obsessed with getting ben stiller uh tivo and at the end yeah he say he throws it up and the rocket hits that and it's, it's, it's like, fantastic i just that movie is it's anyway. it's so good anyway no, so good. <clears throat> back anyway. to him uh, so if, if we mention music, I'm sure Rosanna will make it way to the make and Fela the put it put a little Fela Kuti in there. Okay, Don't I can do that. The dead can dance. And dead can dance. Dead can dance. And this yeah. this um hi, this playlist just is so eclectic. It's just all over the place. Um. So then, uh, yeah, it goes on a playlist of Royal Path podcast playlist, something like that. If you want to reach out to us, please reach out to us at contact at royalpath.network. I was just told the other day that the person who is supposed to have taken it or the person who was charged with taking it over has not been able to take it over yet. But I think that that's happening. Okay. So people are waiting on responses. That's what's going on. Um, and then you can also reach out Andrew at royalpath.network. Trust me, a couple of you guys did last uh, after last episode. And there's one person in particular. I had to really be like, you need to back off a little bit. Um, oh, boy. And- yeah, it's it's okay, but you guys can reach out. But let's uh let's let's keep a couple of things to a minimum. Um, yeah. and then uh, what else? Oh, there's um, Scola Coffee. It's a coffee associated mm-hmm. uh with um, with us uh, uh Mount Tabor, the church which is associated with Saint Mary. So please go check it out. Link in the description. Very good coffee. We drink it every week. Um, at coffee hour, and it's great. And then we feel like we plug a lot of stuff. It's all good stuff, but I feel like we plug a lot of stuff now. I can't remember if there's anything else. Oh, Jack, you're killing it. People have been talking about the the, the thumbnails. Thumbnails. It's great. I absolutely love it. So please keep up the good work. Um, I think that is it. So thank you very much. For, uh, thank you for having a good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right.